that Josh made before he uh, departed the, uh, um, the Zcash Foundation that I will probably make a reference to and I should probably share it. I'm just getting up the full text. We didn't post it anywhere publicly because like we wanted, we basically wanted to have this conversation because we didn't want to have like an incomplete, like the foundation thinks this thing about the NUP and we, but we were like, we, we want to talk more about the NUP or whatever, whatever might come from an evolution in the NUP or anything like that. Um, okay. So um, this is a call, a community call about the NUP the NUP as it exists, the NUP as it might exist, should we still have a NUP? What is the NUP? Why do we have it? Why does it exist? Like all these sort of existential questions. Um, and mostly they come out of the network upgrade pipeline or the network upgrade protocol, and upgrade, whatever, whatever your favorite fill in the meanings of the P and the NUP means. Uh, pipeline. Pipeline? Okay. It originally meant pipeline. Code. We can okay. change it. <laughs> okay, uh, was was set up by ECC with the main consumer of the nut being the ECC, which is they were they were at the time the only uh, the the only implementers of Zcash the protocol, um, and dovetailing with the nut process is the zip process. I pretty much don't have anything to say about the zip process except to maybe like do more stuff with the zip process. Um, but with the NUP, now we have Zebra like almost ready to go. Uh, as, as long as you know, another large state doesn't catch on fire or something like that, or another pandemic. Um, there will be two major implementers of Zcash the protocol and looking at how the NUP goes and how it affects releasing software and how it affects releasing changes to Zcash the protocol and how those weave together, um, I think is very worthwhile. Um, two things come to mind when I'm thinking about the NUP and how we might want to revisit it. Number one thing is the we're supposed to have a TikTok, TikTok, oh, I can say words, TikTok of approximately April and October every calendar year to do a, a major upgrade, a major hard fork. Um, but those have slipped more often than not um, for good reasons. You don't wanna like do a major major hard fork if you're, you've got nothing to go, like you're just gonna waste it basically. Um, but at the same time, uh, then why, my, my question is like, if we want to do two a year, but they kind of slide all over the place, Maybe we should revisit the hard TikTok of you do it, you do it here, or you do it here, or question mark. Like you, like I don't think there's ever been a NUP scheduled that has been missed or just canceled. If if there have, let me know. Um, and then the second part is like how like how do we drive? what goes into the network upgrade a little more clearly and how do we kind of align it with the software releases, which Zcash D does a good job of because there's plenty of Zcash D releases all the time that do not correlate with a NUP or hard fork. Um, but also what are the goals of the NUP as opposed to the goals of releasing software that people will update to the latest version of software. Um, but I don't have any hard like answers to any of those questions. It's just sort of like, I wanted to get a team together, uh, get a team together to actually talk about these things that actually are impacted by the NUP. Um, so one thing that Josh wrote up and I have an email somewhere and I can share it with you at some point, TLDR, when t when trying to determine what goes into a NUP or a hard fork or a network upgrade, however it gets rolled out in the NUP process, we use the zip process to do that. We already have zips to define like the feature set of consensus changes to the protocol that is Zcash, but also we can use the zip process to actually encode 
what is going into the next up network upgraded stuff. So we would have a canopy, not a canopy zip or something like that. And we would say, okay, per the zip editors, per all these other zips that are created and they go through their own process and they have been implemented or ready to implement or, you know, whatever, this can be a next. Yeah. Thank you, Anthony. Um, this can be a future nut. To go with that, basically, I want to I want to give one constructive point to discuss, which is TikToking every twice a year, but it's optional. Basically, saying if you have stuff ready to go that changes the consensus rules of Zcash the protocol, or is a significant, well, like actually all the Ed two five five stuff changes consensus rules, but um, stuff that would go into a NUP. If it's ready to go, then the zip go, the NUP goes ahead as generally as it has uh, throughout the rest of time. If things aren't ready to go, we don't have to do a hard fork. We don't have to do a network upgrade. This is distinct from releasing software and actually having people like forcing like senescence and stuff like that. So Zcash D and Zebra can continue to release software and like minor versions or security releases or whatever, and they can have senescence built into them and be like, you you have to keep greasing the wheel of upgrading your software or else it'll shut down on you. But that is a distinct thing from Zcash, the protocol getting changed on a regular schedule. So, so that, that was... That was already the case, um, even with the even if we had followed it up. So, it, can I give a, a little bit yeah. of historical background? Please. Um, so the the NUP, So we had done over winter and sapling, and we done those relatively close um, within a, I think a few months of each other, basically. Um, yeah. And part sapling part of the reason for that over over yeah. winter was in the June. Yeah, part of the reason for that, which um, uh, some of us didn't know at the time, and four of us did, was the uh, the BCTV fourteen floor. Um, so that basically contributed to um, sapling being a little bit rushed, I think, um, and it was very stressful for for everyone to do it that quickly. Um, so after that, um, we basically decided that. Um, we needed a lot more time between um, implementing uh, an upgrade and it actually activating. So um, myself and Mary Moore Simmons, who was a, a manager at ECC at the time, um, worked out this um, schedule. Um, but I, I think in hindsight, um, some of the time scale on that the NUP schedule wasn't realistic. And it hadn't mm -hmm. really been um, tested out in practice. Huh. Um, so that that was fine because the idea was that we were going to change it um, according to what we actually did. Um, but um, so we ended up doing whatever was um, appropriate to a given upgrade um, and we never got round to actually modifying the NUP schedule. But I will say that part of the goal with having a, a schedule to begin with was the idea that it would allow third parties to plan. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, you know, I at the time I was arguing in favor of, well, why don't we just wait until we have stuff ready to go and then do it? Right. That. And, right. Um, and and Nathan's you know response to that was well if you know if, if you're a third party if you're someone like a Bolt Labs or whatever is looking to get code into into mm -hmm. Zcash the that you know or, you know a, a, a change to the protocol then they need to be able to plan mm -hmm. ahead they can't just you know be be waiting so so that was you know at the time the rationale for having predictable in theory <laughs> mm -hmm. to the, um, yep. To, to, to well, there was another rationale as well, which was once you have that cadence, you sort of force, uh, you know, exchanges and merchants and stuff to actually deal with the consequences of an upgrade. Even if the upgrade doesn't have anything in it, it's still going to change the consensus branch ID. It's going to break stuff. So if you get people used to things breaking, then they'll actually 
the, the care when it's actually a change that they need to uh, address. So. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it lets them plan, you know, I mean, they, they map out their quarterly planning, semi-annual planning, yearly planning, and they kind of know, oh, we can expect, you know, releases on a six-week cadence for, for Zcash D. We can expect a couple of network upgrades um, a year. So, so in my opinion, um, and not speaking for ECC here, we should basically go back to the drawing board and try to achieve the goals that we were originally aiming for and that the the NUP in its current form didn't really achieve. Yeah, I think that would be a great idea. Um, I agree with all of those sort of like, we want to be a reliable thing that our partners can plan around. Um, the the six week release schedule is like exactly what I kind of have in mind, especially for evergreen browsers that always have a software release, but they have a lot of protocols within them that are changing on their own schedule. And you can expect some breaking changes for certain things and maybe some breaking changes for other things, but you almost always have a new piece of software. So releasing, updating the software and being having that working relationship greased uh, regularly every approximately six weeks is like extremely important. Um, but at the same time, sort of, acknowledging that some of those changes in the protocol uh, will come, but they don't necessarily have to come at those, those you know, approximately six month apart uh, time zones, even if they slip. Uh, so, yeah. so there is a change that we're making in the, um, the architecture of Zcash D, um, which is basically making it easier for um, to include consensus changes in the code um, without specifying that they will activate in a given upgrade. Oh, fabulous. Um, um, so I, I had originally suggested that idea. There was originally some resistance to it, um, uh, but Chris was quite keen on it. And so it is now being implemented as, um, so together with the TZE changes. So those changes will be the first um, thing that uses this new mechanism. I like that a lot. It's basically flagging. Yeah, it, 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 is feature flag. yep. yeah. it is feature flagging, and, but the feature flags that are activated by a given network upgrade are independent of the upgrade itself, right? Uh -huh. You can choose. You, you can have the software in and not bit rotting, um, but choose to activate yeah. it at the appropriate uh, network upgrade point. The, there That's are some, we make there are some <laughs> um, complexities there because, for example, if you're making a transaction format change, um, yes. the, then you need to merge the changes from um, all of the features that you're adding at the same time. Um, yes. but that, I think that's going to be fairly straightforward in practice. So it, it's not going to be, um, there's not as much linearization of the, the features that we add anymore. Yeah. Um, one of those, uh, it's, it's probably not any, any significant outlier in terms of uh, the NUP, but one of the things is the Stolon stuff that we're proposing, or at least the experiment that we're running that is basically mm -hmm. going to affect the peer-to-peer -peer connectivity and the, the gossip dissemination of transactions. Um, that is something, so the way we originally envisioned it is it would be an experiment that if nodes understand it, they opt into the new behavior. And if they don't, they just default to the normal behavior. Um, and that's priced into like, kind of the, the model of what we're trying to, to measure and achieve and the security properties or privacy properties that we're trying to improve. Um, but then like when we have some data and some experiments having run it with just zebra nodes supporting that kind of protocol experiment, um, we would write up a zip and then we would propose it and it would go through the regular zip editor process. And then we would see where in the NUP or a, a hard fork we would uh, get it in. Um, so, so the the nut was originally meant just for consensus changes uh, and consensus changes um, associated with upgrades because it we have done consensus changes outside network upgrades. Um, oh. For example, there was yes, there was the one that enforced um, 
uh, the turnstile for sprout and sapling pools. Um, so, so if if the um, the amount of money in the sapling um, or sprout pools were to uh, go below zero um, in a particular block, that block would be invalid. Um, and that was a rule that we started enforcing independently of a network upgrade because it's it's a restricting consensus rule. Um, so that means that- you I think that was like a like one-off thing. Though. It was very yeah, much it, a one-off though. It was, <laughs> it, was we should, but it, it was something we should have done in the sapling network upgrade uh, that we did not have time to do, but that was so I, very unlikely to, to be violated um, that um, the, the, the point that the I'm trade. trying to make yeah. is that it's not the case that all consensus changes by definition happen in network upgrades. Okay. Mm. <laughs> so I push have, back on that as well. I, like, have not true, could not. Um, it depends on the subset, but also I would argue well, things like stolen are not consensus changes. They are just right. um, they're, they're not. They're essentially like standard Agreed. agreement changes on how to operate. That is useful to roll out alongside and up where we can, yes. um, but you can also just deploy new protocol versions um, at the at the peer to peer layer just to yes. you know, do coordinated upgrades that aren't necessarily consensus upgrades. Correct. Uh, yeah. And the would... the other case, I, I guess the um, uh, the pool enforcement is kind of a case of this is a security um, upgrade may make consensus changes. Mm. That's a good point. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, like Stolon is not consensus com a consensus rule change, but it is a it is a peer to peer networking change. It is a it is implementing Zcash the protocol in a in a not a consensus rule sort of way, but kind of like a fundamental like how does the network behave sort of way. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yep. you know, prior figuring out. In the zip process, perhaps if we update the zip process per uh, the link that Anthony just shared, which is just sort of like you, we make a category of zip that is the way that we publicly kind of encode what is going into an up, and it kind of builds upon all the other sort of process that we have for. Uh, I, I mean, we zips about. we have had a, a deployment zip for every um, network upgrade up to now. Right, but it's how we create that deployment zip. Right, I see. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, just sort of sure. like kind of making it a little more clear about how the contents of an up uh, is shaping up to be, as opposed mm -hmm. to like, surprise, this is the zip for the nut, uh, and sort of like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I see. Uh, and quite okay. quite often those have for previous upgrades been just pulled out of a hat at the last minute, or yeah, out and of I head at the last minute. I know those feelings, <laughs> <laughs> um, but those are kind of the the concrete things that I had to talk about. So I am very, I really want to hear what other people think about their sort of ideas about what a NUP or a, a throw it all away, start from scratch might look like or anywhere in between because we are, we are the two major parties who are affected by these sort of processes. And I know that Stephen had a kind of like, oh, we've been working on a thing like in a back pocket for a while and we never quite got to it in any of the uh, the arborist meetings we've had so far. So not to, not to, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, it, I was gonna, we were gonna do it the, the very first one and then Henry's talk on the Cosmos Peg Zone <laughs> was so interesting. I'm like, okay, one, I can't follow that and two, nobody wants me, wants to hear it right now, so. Um, yeah, but I just kind of, kind of posted some thoughts we had uh, in the forum this morning. Um, and I, you know, I had chatted with basically the folks on the call uh, from ECC and in their experiences with an up and over time what they'd learned and how we could potentially make it better. So that was just kind of a summary of some of the some of the thoughts. You know, the, the, the short version is, uh, it, you know, it's, it was pretty it was pretty rigid, like uh, probably way too rigid. And, and the timelines were like super long, like, you know, mm -hmm. elongated in terms of, you know, partner adoption, I think was was five months, which is my goodness, like we invest so much in uh, ecosystem outreach that, you know, our partners are, are largely ready. Like with Heartwood, we had, you know, 80% of the mining hash power confirmed for the upgrade and the other 20% probably there, we, we didn't hear from anybody after the fact. So 
Um, so definitely you can shorten some of those time frames in there. Um, you know, but the key is like the, the, you know, the intent is, you know, there's kind of an organization, there's a sequence of events, there's the, hey, decide what goes in, have the spec audits, you know, get a prototype running for uh, feature selection, do the implementation. So those are some, you know, some good tenants to, I think, carry forward. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, all, all of the things that are in the, the NUP, all of the milestones do need to be done um, yeah. and mm -hmm. in pretty much that order. Um, it's so we can quibble about the, the length of yeah. time, but um, right. I think they still need to be done. And I'm going to share the current NUP for anyone like yes. me Excellent. who wants a reference. <laughs> You need to make sure it's the right. I think there are three versions. I do, is this the one that's on the? This is the one that's on the website. So is that the latest internal that version? That is not. I don't think that's the latest one. That was the initial one that was deployed. That's from the initial blog. But there's definitely been at least one revision to that. That has been okay. banded around, but I don't. I guess the blog wasn't updated. Uh, let me try and find it that? internally. OK, thank you, Darren. Uh, Stephen, you, you do it as well, and we'll see I, I think, first. I think that's it right there, the one I just posted. All right, oh, okay. it, I think. <laughs> yeah, that, that's Sorry, it. where did you post it? Oh, right. I, I just put it in the Google chat, drawings. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, um, I think that one's actually linked out of the blog post. Um, yeah. Yeah, NU3 versus NU4. Mm -hmm. So the, the thing to note here is that uh, between milestone one and activation is a full, um, year and a bit which is kind <laughs> of totally unrealistic <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. but, so i i'm i'm not sure that zip review actually needs to be on this diagram at all yeah but the yep. the draft zip submission deadline does yes because that that needs to be sequenced relative to um feature selection relative to um the start of the specification audit. Yeah, we we that was our first one. That the zip review begins is really a non-event. It, it zips are reviewed <laughs> like continually, right? I mean, yep. um, so yeah, no. It, I mean, at, at it, the time, it, it, I yeah. think at the time, I think the zip process wasn't. Um, uh, it, it's got going a bit more um, since then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I but think the salient point go ahead. for the beginning, the salient point from the from that first red section is that we need to have a zip before we can agree on a feature to go into an upgrade. It's Absolutely. Really the first point trying to convey. Uh, you're dropping out. Take our and go. I'm yep. going to be. Um, the salient point from the red section is we can't just go straight from R and D into um, specific audit. Right. Um, in a sense. The specification section, a lot of that will probably be during the zip review yeah. phase. Um, we generally have to be fully prescriptive of specifications at the time we agree on the features. We just need to have it specified right, enough that we understand and believe it is feasible to get in. Um, yes. But that might be something that we will have to change going forward. So, so basically, when um, when the zips are selected for a given upgrade, we have to be confident that uh, it is possible to tighten up any remaining specification ambiguities. Um, yeah. But they they don't so, have to be done yet. Right, and and we get you know we get feedback from both on the spec audit and the implementation audits where they'll you know they'll be like oh the wording is a little ambiguous here you could tighten it up or you know comment the code a little better perhaps so there's always little tweaks uh, that we get back so so this this does however pres presume that 
implementation, you know, that that specification and essentially the choice of what goes into a particular upgrade um, precedes specification and implementation. And you know, mm, yes, I, th I think and that is something mm. I have wanted to change for quite some time. Like, yes, yeah, the, I would yeah. almost. I, I don't think we should retain uh, that. No, like I would say, code implementation here should be more thought of in this ordering as code integration into the full nodes potentially but like it would be yeah. like, it would be much better if if the at the point we're considering the zips there is at least enough of an implementation of them really that we can actually like check yeah what they're doing and what we did want them, etc so Very. so the the may be implementation left to do and in fact there will be if there are interactions between features yeah i think the the implementation part like is basically the the integration part is basically the last sort of deciding factor modulo i don't know other stuff but like when you're trying to finalize the the nup zip for example like the things that are going to be as part of an, the next one whatever the next one is in the next six months it's is this like ready to go modulo integrating and then what is the integrating and that'll be kind of the determining factor in an engineering perspective there are other things to consider but if this is ready to go and the only thing you have left to do is just a little bit of this that would be i think okay to go into the next network upgrade um if you have a bunch of software but if it's like oh well this has to happen and this has to happen and this is going to work poorly with this thing it's like okay well maybe we need to push that out uh, so that you can figure that out because that looks like it will be a, it might miss if we decide to queue that up for the next one. But it can be the next one, the next TikTok. You yeah. don't lose and that. That's the kind of feedback that it's good to be able to get at the at latest the feature selection stage, but ideally during the the zip development process, so that people who are proposing upgrades can can understand what work remains for them. Very, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, one thing I'll, I'll note is that for the foundation, we don't have anything lined up about auditors or specification audits or implementation audits yet. So that's just not a thing that we are currently worrying about. I know that you guys do, and we, I don't have any kind of problem with having a schedule that takes that sort of thing into account because that leaves us open to do it ourselves or anyone else to do it ourselves. Um, but that's just not like a thing that we have at the moment. Yeah, something that um, that did influence earlier iterations, probably in the situation of the NUP, was that we would generally operate like from from past experience. Um, you had to allow roughly an eight week period, I seem to recall, between sort of like working on scheduling auditors through to having a um, having a report, mm -hmm. um, and so that that iteration period is sort of what led to the links of those specification audit sections of roughly two months uh, and mm -hmm. audits in yeah. terms of like yeah. making mm. sure that you, in, in particular, affecting the implementation point of having the code fully integrated and ready and then have efficient time to, to run that audit prior to setting the mainnet activation height mm -hmm. uh, in a release. So yeah. Yeah. that is like one, one example of a minimum constraint on, on, on mm -hmm time between things mm -hmm. yep. um, another yeah, equivalent just... one being, uh, mm -hmm. at least in ecc's model um the time between setting the activation height for the main net release and existing ecc nodes having reached the end of service halt uh, um, a minimum window sets sort of a, between uh, the activation height being set and the activation height mm -hmm. itself uh, right mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what uh, the foundation's plan is for like um, node service, uh, node support. Uh, what what the mm -hmm. foundation's planning for um, providing support for their nodes, or uh, how you want to approach that? Yeah, it, it would be good to know whether you're planning to have a fixed period um, for end of service hall. Yep, we're uh, discussing okay. that. Uh, yeah, I I didn't think that you would have decided yet. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the, the the sixteen weeks works out well if 
if you stay synced up on that six month cadence for, so a 16 week release cadence syncs well with a six month in you cadence, because then your EOS halting releases that would not work with the NU prior to the NU activating. And then, and then you wind up with two releases in the field that support that NU. So in case there's like, oh my gosh, there's a meltdown. We also have another release we can put patches on that works. So. Yeah, we uh, we've it. talked about we've talked about senescence and just yeah. making it real quick and dirty, basically. Um, and we've also for we're going through like our release and sort of upgrade processes uh, for our first release. And it's basically like we are not going to be releasing binaries that don't have an obvious way to just point at latest and fetch it or f fetch the latest major version or something like that. It's probably going to be cargo installs our libraries and yep. uh, the Docker image so that you can point at the latest tag and things like that and try to make it as easy as possible for people to always run latest or, you know, latest minus one or whatever it is uh, for those reasons explicitly. Um, yeah. Um, and then in terms of support outside of that, it'll basically be like we the, the latest two versions and security patching, we have to discuss that story too. Um, we don't have that nailed out yet. Um, looking at looking at the NUP that exists, um, my first instinct is I have a feeling that Zebra will be able to move faster than this timeline just to get things working and sort of out there. But then it'll just be about like finalizing, like integration testing between Zebra and Zcashd and yep. finalizing these NUPs and getting them out and making sure that partners are able to pick them up. Mostly because Zcashd has partners, we, Zebra doesn't have any yet. Um, Knockwood will have some. I think, this is sort of a, a little bit of an aside, but Zika, a Zebra, the the binary that we will be releasing, um, relies on a bunch of libraries like Zebra Network, Zebra Chain, Zebra State, and things like that. We will also probably be releasing all of those things at the same time. They might be versioned a little bit differently, but they're, like any time that we have a major release of Zebra, it'll probably also come with major releases of our libraries. Mm -hmm. And those libraries will also probably have uh, integrators or users that I don't know how yep. that would affect this pipeline because Zebra Network is how we connect is like Stolon. That's like that's how Stolon works. Uh, it's all in this one little library. So it's like we've got a couple of things that are handling these sort of zips or protocol changes or, you know, whatever. Um, and then chain is different and whatever. I don't have anything concrete about that, but I have a feeling that that will be a factor to stuff down the road. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, how would you like it to work um, in an ideal world? Um, at what, what things, I, I mean, I, I know you want to have more input into uh, what goes into an upgrade, but what would that concretely look like? So for my perspective, Zcash the protocol is determined by the zip process and any major, uh, any major version changes that are traditionally called NUPs um, would be all proposed via the zip process. And then while we're determining any future NUP, we would look at how well implemented the thing is before we say, this looks like a candidate for the next NUP, whether the next NUP is six months away or 12, or 12 months away or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then the zip editors work on the zip for the next NUP in public as we do with all the other, uh, as we do with the other things. And we kind, of we kind of make it work the way that we've just discussed. And then there is, a zip that says, cool, these seems, all of the things in a zip for a new NUP probably should already be implemented by the time we say, cool, this is the thing. And then it will go from 
like preliminary to finalized when it gets turned on. Uh, that's in uh, Josh's write up that got linked earlier in the in the in the chat. Um, and then, but but the, the the number one thing is that we may be doing a lot of work and it's kind of like part of the way there and it's really good and we really want to do this. But if it's not like ready to go with modulo, a little bit of integration work, maybe like within n months of the zip or, you know, whatever it is, like it should be fine to leave it out of the next nup. But also if we don't really have anything that's of significance, for the next TikTok of the NUP, like we don't have ne necessarily have to have one. We can both yep. release our pieces of software, we can implement these things and we can feature flag them if we want, if they're not consensus based. Um, we can even do it if they are consensus based, be like you run this at your own risk. This is not uh, this is not <laughs> consensus compatible if you want to do an experiment. Um, but if the NUP doesn't have anything of note, ready to go by the time we have to say yes or no, this is the ne next nup, then we don't have to. Yep. And there's precedent for that because um, after, yep. I mean, this was pr prior to slash as we were defining the nup, but um, we didn't, uh, there wasn't an upgrade in uh, first half of 2019, mostly because we were so damn tired after doing yeah. sampling. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we only did one upgrade at the end of 20, um, at the end of 2019 uh, as a result uh, of that. And in fact, that upgrade, Blossom, um, had fewer features than we'd uh, originally planned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah, so I, I, would, yeah. I would basically say that follows the more kind of natural, unforced workflow of what has happened and would definitely happen, could have possibly happen again, which is just sort of like, we've, we've got a bunch of stuff, we got a bunch of stuff out and then there's a bit of a lull. And so if there's enough in, in that sort of lull, we don't have to push it out, but we do want to continue to push out software to keep that upgrade path of the software going and sort of the integration, you know, the keeping the skills up to par with whatever organizations or users are to make sure that they're already, they're not losing the know-how and ability to update their integrations with changes that come down in our software. But then, I, I, I mean, yeah. So, so personally, I, I would be fine with tearing up the schedule, but um, I want to make sure that um, so if we're coordinating, especially if um, Zebra is going to be sort of a node um, uh, that is expected to keep up with consensus on the par with. Um, it's um, mm -hmm. So to we're, be clear, I don't have any yeah. timeline, mm -hmm. any right. proposal of like, oh, we're going to throw this away this week and then we're going to have something new and it's going to come into effect like by the end of September. Mm -hmm. Not proposing that at all. This is this is very much like, let's think about like we've been working with the zip for years. Now let's think about something else. And then we can see how that fits with you know, Zebra is not done yet. And by done, I mean like a con full consensus node yet. Yeah, it should be very, very soon, knock wood, but we definitely don't want processes to change out from under us while we're still building the car. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Well, the, the, you know, it's like Strat and Error were mentioning earlier, the, the key tenants of the NUP are kind of these these gates, you know, and they're, they're almost like safety valves, right? Like. Don't throw something in at the last second that barely got implemented, that hasn't been audited, and create a security risk, right? So there, agreed. Uh, there's those gates that make make a lot of sense. There's common sense actually, and then to the extent you can be predictable in terms of cadence, both software releases as well as network upgrades, that really helps the the ecosystem if they kind of know. Okay, well we can roughly expect one, you know, mid year and then mid fall or something like yeah. that. So, yeah, I kind so, of like the idea of cool. keeping a TikTok, but keeping it optional. So that's like we could keep it April, October, or we could change it or whatever, and have it be like, if there is one, it'll come in April, or it'll come in October, or maybe both. But like, that's that kind of keeps those expectations in line. Um, but it's also like, 
there's also the software part. Right. So, so well, let's what... make this a little bit more concrete because we we do have plans for um, what the next consensus changes are likely to be. So we have um, transparency cache extensions, which are mostly implemented already and specified already. Um, and we have a plan to work on um, so sapling on Halo 2, um, which is um, the sapling using the, a variation of sapling using the Halo proving system and Tweedle curves. Um, so in order for that, um, this is not decided yet, but in order for that hypothetically to go into NU5, um, the Zebra team would also have to be uh, sort of planning for that as well. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, just a note on the TikToks, by the way. So the, the next one is kind of forced to be no, roughly November 18th, just due to the the having and everything. So yeah, um, it, yeah. So we're we're kind of stuck with that one. And then six months mm -hmm. after that would be roughly May 18th. So just just a, a note on. I think originally, and even in the one you have presented, uh, Deirdre, the the NU4 was like in October 2020. Uh, type yep. activation, which is it's kind of set or locked in at, at November, just based again on the halving. So, okay. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. there was an option to um, do it at a different time to the halving, but um, it would have been much more complicated. Hmm. So going forward, it seems like it, it might be a good idea to actually write up a zip. Yeah describing the network upgrade uh, process? Yeah, it, it already has a number. It, it's zip one. Um, <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, no one's so, written it yet. <laughs> so in that case, uh, so a draft can be written by fewer people, and then we can look at it, and then if our company or individuals in the community or whoever uh, dispute certain things or think we can improve it in certain ways, then we can raise it at that point and then continue iterating until we end up with <coughs> zip number one. That no, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for a high level of like, I think some of the specific goals of any NUP, either the old one or the, any new iteration or completely new thing, are allowing one those gate checks of allowing new consensus and uh, consensus rule changing implementations and features to get in to our implementations of Zcash the protocol safely uh, in a consensus compatible way now that we have more than one implementation um, two to um, allow the composition of a new network upgrade to be done in a kind of clear, transparent way. So it doesn't just kind of like come down from someone who talked in a room somewhere and, and everyone agreed. Um, and everyone just is sort of like, oh, look, there is a new NUP. Um, and th that TLDR, one way we could do that is by doing it via the zip process too. Uh, another one is um, not necessarily uh, needing to do a network upgrade if we don't have those things kind of ready to go. Like not forcing one if we don't really have anything of note or consequence to put into one. While at the same time, we want our partners who integrate with us to be able to predict around network upgrades, but also have a, a well-greased pathway to upgrading their node software um, and integrate and update their integrations with the software whether that's at a consensus level or just software changes level. Am I missing anything? So, Any high our, the, so the idea of not doing a network upgrade if we don't have stuff, I don't entirely know if we are entirely on board with that. Right. Okay. Uh, right. Right. Yeah. That's something we're going to have to talk about. I'm not. Okay. I, that, but the, the rest of it sounds exactly like what underpins the entire process. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we'll probably 
try to clean up. We're probably not going to throw away the nup completely. We're probably just going to try and take the the, be the best bits and try to streamline it a little bit. Um, and maybe I would I would want to try to make it a little more um, agnostic to the ECC and be like, here we have enough time in this nup to allow for auditing of the spec and auditing of implementations. But that's like, that's kind of up to those who do that, those sort of thing. Um, well, but yeah. I mean, right. The, so it, so it, in, oh, in my ahead, opinion, um, it is okay for things to slip. Um, mm -hmm. So okay. if you if you plan correctly, then they shouldn't slip too far, but it, it is okay for a, um, an activation height to slip by up to two months. Um, but that's hmm. just my opinion. Okay. Yeah, and just a note on the security audits, and, it, and just for clarification, although I'm pretty sure everyone on this call already knows it anyway, but I know it is recorded and people will listen to it later. You know, security audits for, and, and I'm looking ahead to like major grants when there are hopefully other mm -hmm. protocol teams uh, doing mm -hmm. things. So it's a, it's a bigger discussion. You know, yeah. we, we should we should really just expect and insist that any consensus level changes come with those security audits because I know they're yeah. expensive, but the expense of an audit compared to the expense of a security bug is tiny mm -hmm. in comparison. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, at an implementation level, it's up to obviously the implementation, you know, individual implementations right. decide what they do. But at the specification level, there is definitely benefit in in having people external to the Zcash community getting eyes on this, um, right. if if for no other reason than a difference in perspective. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the, one of the most important aspects of um, the security audits is just making sure having multiple eyes check that the specification and the implementation match because mm -hmm. it's very easy for them to get out of sync um, mm -hmm. and they would have got um, out of sync in several respects um, if those audits particularly by um, NCC and CoinSpect um, hadn't been done. Mm -hmm. So just a, a comment, um, it's a very good point and we definitely need to get everything reviewed I worry if we put the wrong emphasis on uh, the kind of audits you pay auditors for, we'll get low level review, but not necessarily high level review of, of new cryptographic concepts. So looking at some of the stuff that other uh, cryptocurrencies are trying to do, um, a lot of these things are not things that you would find skills in a standards but, audit firm to analyze. That, that, that is so not it's necessary, but not sufficient. That is not right. what those That's, audits are for. Right. I'm aware, but but if yeah. we yeah. if we tell everybody well, that the the bar is you have to do this, there is just the risk that that'll be the bar, and in fact, actually, there's a bunch of other stuff that has to happen too in terms of review. Yeah, peer review. Uh, yeah. That yeah, kind of much. review that I think you're referring to is the sort of thing that should be happening prior to feature selection at the more high level. Like we mm -hmm. we we shouldn't be getting to the point of having something going into being a an a network upgrade candidate and part of a candidate zip um, and therefore going through the integration and, and like high, lower level specification order phase if it hasn't passed the bar of the zip editors are happy that this has sufficient you know, high level review, um, yep. which, which comes as right. part of the general zip process for developing those zips. That sounds exactly right. Okay, yep, I think we're agreed on that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm writing up an issue, but not yet a zip in the zips uh, repo with basically the the goals that we've agreed on for any nut process and the things that we're still discussing about what we might do differently or what we might strip out uh, or what we want to see in a new nut process. And then we can that can be a place for people. Well. I don't know if this should be on the form. I probably don't want to put it on the form yet because it's not concrete. It's still, we're still massaging things and talking about things. So it's going to be in the in the zips repo for now. And then we can start massaging it into an actual zip for the new, the new NUP or whatever we want to call it, or the updated NUP that might be just redoing zip number one. Um, the NUP date. As we go. Yes. The NUP date. Like the the NUP date. Yes. Mm -hmm. NUP, the, NUP, <laughs> the name. 
I called it NUP the new NUPPENING, but the NUP date. You know, the NUPPENING. Yeah. Yes, the NUPPENING. Um, but yeah, that's, that is most of what I wanted to talk about today. Cool. Is, anyone, is there anything we haven't touched on that anyone wants to make sure we touch on before? Yes. Um, yeah. So there are some ambiguities in the uh, trademark agreement. Um, mm. So, um, for example, so I, I found two. Um, one is that issue that I um, mentioned before um, about consensus upgrades outside, uh, consensus changes outside network upgrades. So the, the terminology in the trademark agreement just says network upgrade, but it the only sensible way of interpreting it is as a consensus change because mm. we would want to run um, any consensus change um, through the um, the uh, two of two multi-sig anyway. Um, the second thing is um, what happens if there's a chain fork? So there's a section of the um, trademark agreement that discusses basically what happens um, if ECC and the ZF don't agree. Um, and it says that the resulting chain um, can't be come with Zcash. Um, so there's a question there because um, in principle, it, it's possible for there to be a chain fork. So does that apply to all resulting um, chains? I, I think it probably should. So all, all chains on which the ECC and ZF do not agree mm -hmm. um, after this, so persistently don't agree for the time period that's specified, um, should not be called Zcash. So this might be well addressed. Um, well, it might be partially addressed if we bring the sort of encoding what is in an up, however, all the other kind of decision points aside uh, via the zip process. Mm -hmm. um, because at least in that regard, that is sort of like a community visible consensus way to agree on what we think a network upgrade is supposed to be yep. for Zcash. Um, and then if that if there's a bug, which we're all human, that could happen and it, there is a chain fork, um, I, I'm not a lawyer <laughs> and I'm not anyone's lawyer, including the foundations or anyone else's, but I feel like that is within the spirit of the language. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I mean, think that well, unintentional bugs were, would be covered by that. Um, the, no, I don't, I don't think so. That, that wasn't what, what I was thinking okay. of. I was thinking of the case where... For example, suppose um, that uh, Zcash, the, the some persistent disagreement, and Zcash D and Zebra D um, define different consensus rules. So at, at some point they would fork, and then which one are you allowed to call Zcash? Well, um, according according to the trademark agreement, the answer is neither. Um, so then I think the. In the case if both if both Zebra D and Zcash D were to define new consensus rules, as in define some NUP that they each follow that yeah. switches to incompatible rules, then I agree that like yeah, makes sense that neither would be Zcash any longer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the bit I see as <laughs> yeah, the bit I see as ambiguous is what about in the case where one advocates an upgrade and the other advocates no upgrade? Mm. Because then the, yep. they, uh, there is a disagreement on what the current rules should be. But mm -hmm. one of those current rules is just keep the same rules. Um, you could potentially see an argument for as long as, those, as long as the disagreeing party that sticks with the existing rules doesn't change those rules, then they could keep calling it Zcash. But at the point they then define some future upgrade, they would no longer be able to call it Zcash. You could also so, see an argument so for agree... at the point of split, even the unmodified existing rules could no longer be called Zcash. 
from so, that. Happening. So I I agree that that might be a sensible policy. That's not actually what the trademark agreement currently says, and therefore, yeah, um, yeah we need to look at that. Yeah. I, I mean, I assume that um, Josh Cincinnati and, and Zuko um, considered this in some detail, but so we, we shouldn't just um, decide Spitball. that, no, that's not <laughs> sensible. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good point. And we can we can wrangle Josh back in uh, on our side and see if he uh, he remembers any specific uh, d debate about that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, that's a good question. My first okay, yeah. instinct as a as an engineer or as a protocol person is the latest one is the one, but yeah, it's sort of it would be unfortunate. <laughs> If we, it would be unfortunate if there were a bug and if you weren't aware of why something is happening on the network, all of the zebra nodes just fell behind everyone else or vice versa mm -hmm. with just a new consensus rule or something like that. That's, that's strictly an ad. Um, and then it's sort of like, well, what's going on? Like, in, like in re and then in in regard, if there was no if there was no trademark agreement, this would just be kind of like, well, like the nodes haven't updated to whatever the new consensus rules are, and we have defined what they are in the zip process, and that sucks. But we're gonna we're we the maintainers of Zebra are trying to update that, um, and if we're not, then we aren't strictly doing Zcash anymore we're doing something else, but I don't know why we would do that. Um, who knows, evil Deirdre has access to the repository. I don't know. Um, yeah. Um, but we are I mean, we have running that, up on, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna quickly add that we have that kind of thing already with upgrades where there is a potential for a chain, you know, non upgraded nodes to stay behind and not follow an upgrade. Um, and thus far we've designed the upgrade process to enable them to coexist if they want to. Um, but the intention then, of course, is that people in that case, people staying behind would not be on Zcash anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. So sorry to have opened a can of worms there, but I do think it is something <laughs> that should be um, clarified. Um, if the language that Anthony posted in the chat is accurate, we may need to update the uh, trademark agreement to indicate that there is more than one implementation of Zcash because there is now, well, it says the reference implementation or the reference specification or something like that. So we need to, we probably will that's, need to that's revisit that. That's a very that. good point. Oh, yeah. So the second, exhib exhibit D is actually quite detailed. So we should definitely look at that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Independent yeah. of the NUP, like the fact that Zebra exists seems to work, merit revisiting to the trademark agreement. I, I mean, um, I, I think reference implementation is probably a misnomer because that's really talking okay. about the protocol. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, for that alone, we should probably revisit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, we are running over time. Anyone that wants to bring up anything and maybe we can, <laughs> if we can bring, do it quick or we can bring it up in the next time we talk about this in whatever forum and I will write it down in public uh, um yeah well first of all thanks so much for organizing this and and deirdre if you want we can uh, you know we could use the next harbors call maybe we'd have time between now and then to to do a little bit of work on this and then we could have that as a topic at least part of the time if we don't need yeah. the whole time uh that's just a as good a idea. yeah that's a good idea for the just like the what's the next thing the next thing is yeah i'm writing all this stuff down and maybe a draft zip will come out of it and then either way we can talk about the fact that we talked about this uh, on the mm -hmm. call. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll sync up with you before that call and we'll figure out if we need 10 minutes or 20 minutes or five minutes. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Um, uh, and Deirdre, um, you and I should probably sync up to um, talk about that zip. Yep. Cool. Cool. Thank you, everybody. Uh, yeah, thank this, you. This is very useful. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. Have a good day. See you.